Hi everyone. In this video, I want to explore capacity reservations, something you may have heard of and are not quite sure where exactly this fits in the whole kind of Azure picture. As always, this is useful. Please like, subscribe, comment and share and hit that bell icon to get notified of new content. Now you're probably familiar with Azure reservations. And when I think about virtual machine, you hear about reserved instances. This is all about the idea that, hey, I know over the next one year or maybe three years, my base usage level of a certain type of virtual machine will be X. And so if I say, hey, I guarantee to have this amount running, then I get a big discount. So I'm gonna to commit to always having this base level and then I get a nice discount. If you go and look at things like the Azure pricing calculator, you see that. I can kind of say, hey, yeah, well, I'm using reserved instances, so it shows me, hey, if it's a one-year reserved instance, I get this 39% discount. If it's a three-year reserved instance, I get a 61% discount. So it's me committing that this is gonna be that base level of usage I'm always going to have. You can kind of think about it, if I was a big company, it's, hey, these hotel rooms, I know my people, maybe my sales people, um, I'm always gonna be using five rooms at any one time. And so you're gonna give me a big discount over the next three years. So when they go and check in, they get this discount just applied to the first five rooms booked. So that's the point of reserved instances. Now reserved instances is not guaranteeing that capacity will actually be available. Normally it will be, this is normally not a problem, and you will get prioritization when you actually go and provision the resources, but it's not guaranteeing that it will definitely be available. If there was some incident, something happened, reserved instances is not guaranteeing that. So when we think about that guarantee, that SLA back to assurance that capacity will be available, well, that's the point of a capacity reservation. It's about saying, hey, I'm willing to start paying as of now, and I wanna ensure this specific type of virtual machine in this specific region or specific even availability zone is gonna be available for me when I actually go to provision and create my resources. So if I was to think for a second about the idea that, okay, there's some particular region and I may or may not be focusing on particular kind of availability zones within that region, what I'm doing with a capacity reservation is essentially, let's say I commit to AZ1. It's essentially reserving me slots that I could then go and provision resources into of a very particular type. Maybe this is kind of a, a B1S, and obviously in this case I've done two capacity reservations for it. So I've picked this particular region, we could say this is kind of East US, and I've picked kind of AZ1 in this example. So it's a particular VM SKU, not a family, it's a particular exact size within that SKU. It's a particular region, it's a particular quantity, and optionally, if AZs are supported in that region, it can be a particular AZ. And these are constructed into a capacity reservation group. So I create a capacity reservation group, and then one or more actual reservations within it. And we can see this, if I jump over to the portal for a second, if I actually just go and look at capacity reservations, what we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead, now I don't have a capacity reservation group, so I have to go and create one of these. So we go and create this capacity reservation group, I give it a name. Now this capacity reservation group is tied to that particular region, so maybe I'll say, hey look, this is East US. You can see here I'm picking the particular region, and optionally, I could say I actually want it for this particular availability zone, or, I don't have to do that, but in our example, we'll say AZ1. Then I go and create one or more actual reservations. So here you can see, hey, I'm picking an exact size. So maybe here I'll pick, say, say a, a B2S, and I might say, okay, this is my B2S res, and I want two of them. 
And you can see I can add multiple reservations to this. Then I would actually go through and hit the create. So that would then go and actually create that capacity reservation group and then the reservations within it. Once I hit that create button, at that point when I'm hitting create, it will now go off and it will check, hey, is there capacity of this type in that AZ, in that region, and do I have quota for that in my subscription? If it is successful, at that point it creates the reservation, and the key thing, I start paying at that point. So it's regular kind of a, a pay-as-you-go pricing. I am now paying for those reserved slots, even though there's currently nothing running inside it. But that's now backed by a service level agreement. I'm guaranteed to have that capacity. Now there is no fixed duration for this. At the point I provision it, and I can do it through templates or CLI, assuming it is successful, that is now reserved and backed for me. I can delete that at any time. It's not like there's some commitment I have to use it for. I can create and cancel these at any times I want, but realize while it exists, I am paying for that whether there was a resource in there or not. So now what would happen is, hey, I've gone ahead and created this capacity reservation. Now I'm actually ready to create resources into it. So at a time I now provision, for example, a VM, I can stipulate, hey, I want to create it into this particular capacity reservation group. So if I create a VM, hey, that now gets created into that slot. I'm not double paying. At this point, I'm paying for this unused kind of slot, and then I'm just paying for the VM. So it's not like I have to pay for the reservation and the VM. If there's a, something created into kind of that slot, hey, I'm just paying for the regular VM at that point. And then I could go ahead and create another VM in that slot. So I've now used up that capacity. Now it is possible to over-provision. If I have quota left in my Azure subscription and there's capacity available, I could go and add another virtual machine. But if I then went ahead and deallocated it, there's no guarantee, hey, that there's gonna be actual capacity available. What I could do is if I added another VM into that capacity reservation group, and then I decided, hey, this one really is important, I could change my capacity reservation group to three, and now this would get protected by an SLA uh, backed guarantee as well. So that's how I'm using these. Now obviously I might create virtual machines that are just regular. Well then I wouldn't stipulate a capacity reservation group when I create them. I can still just go ahead and create VMs just as normal. I don't have to use that SLA backed capacity reservation. But the nice thing about this now is let's say I deallocated one of these VMs well, there's no risk, and this is a tiny risk anyway, there's no risk when I try and restart it, there's no capacity left. This is guaranteed to be available for me. So I can dynamically change those reservations. Uh, again, I'm not double paying. And I talked about those Azure reservations, reserved instances, which is a billing mechanism. It wakes up each hour and says, hey, what's running, and applies the discount. It would apply the discount to my capacity reservations as well. So for example, if here this slot was empty, again, you pay the regular rate. There's no like discounts ordinarily. I pay the same cost for a capacity reservation as if there's a VM running in it. I'm reserving that spot. But if I have reserved instances, that discount would also apply to those reservations in the same manner they apply just automatically to VMs that fit within that uh, reserved instance flexibility group, assuming I have actual availability left of the reserved instance. So that's the whole point. So when I go ahead and actually create resources, I just specify, hey, I wanna use a capacity reservation group. And I can do this from the portal. So in the portal, it's just under the advanced tab. And you can see here it's saying, hey, you'll see this capacity reservations drop down and you'd select it. I can do it through PowerShell. You just specify the capacity reservations group ID. I can do it from an ARM template. I can deallocate an existing VM 
and then just in the configuration, go and select my capacity reservation group. If I had just regular VMs running, you can always just go and look at their properties and it will show you if it's part of a capacity reservation group. And you can always go and look at the capacity reservation group to see, hey, um, how many slots do I have left available? Um, am I over provisioned? It would show you if you're over provisioned. And again, at any time you can go and modify those actual values. So you might be wondering, why would I use this? Azure normally always has capacity available. We don't often see allocation failures. And again, the second we hit that create button, I start paying this as if there is a VM there. Well, the scenarios really vary, but it's when I need an absolute guarantee, when I come to create my resource, I will not hit some kind of capacity problem in the region. Maybe I have a huge deployment about to happen this weekend. And what I wanna do is it absolutely has to deploy. Well, I'm willing to start paying maybe a couple of days in advance to guarantee capacity is available. And then when I do the deployment, I will specify deploy into that capacity reservation group so there's no risk of allocation failures. Think about disaster recovery. Hey, maybe there's kind of another region Maybe I ordinarily run kind of a, an active, and this is kind of a cold standby, but in a real disaster, I don't want to risk everyone else failing over to the same region. And I have a few critical workloads that absolutely must be able to start. So what I could do is in that kind of DR region, because of the criticality, I am willing to pay for essentially a couple of guaranteed allocation spots so that in the event of some disaster, hey, there's space available. Now remember, I might run other workloads that I could use these capacity reservations for while they're not needed for my important workloads. And if there was a true disaster, hey, I could shut down the things that are using them up because they're not critical and then start up my critical workloads into it. Remember, it's guaranteed, so I can deallocate things. I, I know it's gonna be there. So I don't have to have them empty. I could have some less critical workload running in them in my DR location, but I don't run the risk of stopping those things and some other customer jumping into that capacity. It's reserved for me. So I could then, hey, in a true disaster, shut down the stuff so I'm not ordinarily just wasting money and then start up my critical workloads, those essential slots in the region or maybe specific AZs are guaranteed and available to me. So I can think about, hey, I have some big deployment happening, I wanna make sure there's capacity, um, it's some mission critical app, I don't wanna risk there's some deallocation, and then when I start it again, there's a capacity issue, maybe for some key DR workloads, I wanna do that. Again, remember you can kick things out, so I don't have to just leave them idle, I could use them for various types of things, but that's the goal of this. It's a mechanism for me to make sure and backed by an SLA, there's gonna be capacity available for me. And again, if you do have reserved instances and you have kind of the reserved instance for some kind of three year or one year term, remember that automatically just wakes up and at some scope, be it a management group or subscription or resource group, it applies that discount automatically to N number based on the number I've got in my reserved instance. So these slots would still get that discount, even if they're empty, based on, hey, the capacity I have left in my reserved instance to apply to cores of that type. So that's it. It's probably not something you're gonna use just for ordinary workloads. Again, the second you hit create, you start paying the regular cost of whatever that VM SKU size is but providing it's empty, I can scale these down, I can delete it at any time. It's just a way that I can guarantee that capacity is gonna be available uh, when I need it. So that's it. Um, I hope that makes sense. Again, mission critical workloads, maybe DR, I have some big deployment, and I wanna make sure the capacity is available, um, so maybe certain scale out scenarios. Great usage for doing that capacity reservation. 
Again, this is not a common problem. You don't generally gonna hit uh, capacity allocation failures, but if you absolutely must guarantee, um, this is how you can do that. So I hope this was useful. Until next time, take care.